Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and it's another week. It's an another round of toys that we get to look at. A little bit lighter this week. A bunch of it's stuff we already knew about, and we're getting new pictures or new information, or we finally get verification for rumors. But it's still action figures, and that's always fun. So let's just jump right in. As you saw in the intro, the pics and the videos and the info for the Coffin Comics Lady Death from Executive Replicas and Loose Collector are just pouring in. Six inches tall, 24 points of articulation. She comes with her, uh, what's it called? A Hell Scythe, a Deathbringer sword, and then a removable cape. The cost is $53, but there's also a Coffin Comics exclusive that comes with a signature plate signed by Brian Polito and that'll run you $60. You also have to put down a $15 non-refundable deposit. Pre-orders start today and then run to June 12th. So that's the whole rundown, and it is a little bit pricey, but I have to think it's because it's such a small venture. Before this, I hadn't seen Lady Death a lot, and this just comes out of nowhere. It just being, hey, here's an action figure. I think it's gonna be a small run. They gotta get into the factory, get out, and the lower the numbers, the higher the cost. Breaking it down, I've paid more for an SH Figure Arts figure that comes with less and is actually smaller, and uh, I don't know. I feel like this may be my only chance to get a Lady Death that's in scale with the rest of my collection. I've seen comments of the figure in the video is missing the shading on the white, and I've been told that it's the same figure as the promo pics, it's just different settings for the camera. Actually, Loose Collector took the promotional images and him knowing toys it's nice setting it's nice lighting everything's shown off and then the video is shot by coffin comics who received the prototype shot some video did a lot of editing to it i can only imagine that the white blew out the shading also the cape in the video isn't secured down it actually lays flat but it really comes down to how much of a fan lady death you are or how much you want a figure of the character on your shelf i fall into that second category plus i'm a, just a fan of loose collector we've ran the same circles for a long long time and it oh, it always tickles me when I see somebody from the family doing higher profile work in the industry. And now it's that time of the week when we take a little peek at the McFarland Toy Spawn Kickstarter and see what the hell's going on there. Wait, it's over? <laughs> it's really over? I actually haven't checked in a couple hours, so let's take a look where it's at. Well, as I'm shooting this, there's 84 minutes to go and it's at $3.3 million. I don't think there's any worries about this funding and getting made. As for the add-ons that were announced this week, you should see a list scrolling right here because at this point, it's it's useless. And by the time you see this, it'll be over. So you know what you've ordered and you should, well, we, I, I feel like when I finally get these, it'll be like, oh, that, that's what's going on here. But just know some figures come with some things, other figures come with other things. Uh, it's mostly Spawn inspired. In fact, it's all Spawn inspired. It's very Spawny. This week, Todd did show the color scheme for the launcher gun that comes with the modern Spawn and also announced that the gun we had been seeing throughout the Kickstarter that we thought was coming with all the figures is now only coming with the classic. Classic also gets a painted sword that is similar to the artist proof's black and white sword but they've changed the pommel a little bit. And I can only guess that that part comes off so it'll slide through the hole in the sword gripping fist hand that they announced several years ago. A couple of days ago, we saw a drawing of the necroplasm that comes with it. Just this morning, he showed actual renders for different necroplasms that's gonna come with different figures depending on what you ordered. Along with a video of Spawn holding the actual weapons and them looking just like big bastards in his hand, Spawn's toting some BFGs or BHGs, big honking guns. This morning, as it got over, the, well, it got over the three million mark last night, I think, but Todd announced that because it went over three million, there will be more stuff added, but it may be after the campaign. So, there's more stuff. But again, it's over. It's been a wild ass ride. And I, I mean, it's crazy. It, it was a crazy adventure on Todd's part. Brian over at Super 7 has posted new production pictures of their Masters of the Universe classic Snake Mountain. And oh my God, this thing's impressive. It's been a while since we've seen the prototype at San Diego Comic-Con. So looking at this in my brain, I'm like, oh, 
does it look even better now? The original Mattel prototype and then the pictures used in the solicitation were a brighter, more cartoony color. But then at San Diego 2018, Super 7 showed a darker, more realistic color scheme for it. A lot more shading, a lot more moody, a lot more sinister. And this latest factory sample follows that to a T. In fact, surpassing that with the richness of the colors, the shading, the depth. I mean, and it may be lighting, it may be something else, but I feel like they really nailed it here. And they seem to think so too, because it is now going into production. So it should be any day now. <laughs> okay, it may be uh, longer than a few days, but it's coming. Brian even showed off a nifty poster that comes with it. If you're interested in Snake Mountain, it is still up for pre-order on uh, Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. Also from Super 7, if you're still interested in the Thundercats, Ultimates! Series 3, they're still one week on their extended pre-order window. There you go. NECA has revealed another figure in their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Loot Crate series, and we knew it was an arcade figure in Box 2, we just didn't know what it was going to be. Randy had warned us that it was just going to be a lot of reuse, that it wasn't going to be new sculpts in these Loot Crate boxes, and this week we find out it's an electrified turtle, or electrocuted turtle, whatever you want to call it. It actually took me a minute to realize what was going on here, and it, I, I knew it was a turtle body, it, I knew it had the skeleton painted on the outside, but the head was throwing me. I had forgotten that in the game, when they get electrocuted, their mouths... It's neat! and it's horrifying at the same time. But I like that they replaced the head to be more accurate. Plus it glows in the dark, which is extra nifty because I know people that only collect glow in the dark things. And overall, it's just a great addition to the ever-growing NECA TMNT video game collection. So that makes Mirage Shredder for crate number one. Crate number two is the electrocuted turtle from the arcade. And crate number three, we always knew was gonna be cartoon. This week, that was revealed to be Rocksteady in bunny costume to go along with the bonus figure of Bebop in bunny costume from the cartoon. If you want more info on that, head over to Pixel Dan's channel where he did an interview with Randy from NECA. There's a lot to process there. I wouldn't have even known about this one if it wasn't for Preternia.com on Twitter where they posted a link to a Mezco 112th Collective bag of skulls? Mezco snuck a page up that is called uh, Slugfest's Emporium of Badassery. And while that page solicited things like a life-size Gomez wall hanger with articulation and such, and a void clearance card, and a Doc Nocturnal silkscreen poster, which seeing this character, can we get him in Rebel Society? Hmm? But of course, 112th Collective, 112th Scale, the bag of skulls caught my eye. 12 skulls in assorted colors that fit onto, well, a lot of the 112th Collective figures. For $25, that's not a bad deal at all. I'm about two dollars a pop to turn other characters into Rumble Society members on a whim or just using the skulls in other places. They're for sale on Mezco's site, but like most 112 Collective stuff, it's already went to wait lists. So, but how about that Doc Nocturnal? Today Hasbro has an update on their Transformers HasLab Unicron. Now this is a test shot. It's molded in all different colors. It's just to test out the molds to see where it's rough, to see where it needs to be fit, tweaked, put together. But still, this thing's impressive. We've seen this at shows, we've seen it in pictures, but every time you look at it again, you think, oh my god. This picture is the one where I realize I have no spot for this thing. Hell, whoever delivers this is already going to be pissed off at me because of the size of this box. It's 26 by 26 by 26. No, okay, they won't be pissed off because of the handles. That makes it more convenient. But it'll still be like, oh, what? Is this one toy? And all that's just to say that Unicron in production is just trucking right along. Or, well, <laughs> he's orbiting right along. Okay, you knew I was going to find a way to milk the Star Wars reveals from last week's Fan First Friday, right? A few days ago, I put up a rundown of all those reveals from Carbonized Vader to uh, Retro Carded Han and Carbonite, the two pack with Kenner inspired Zuckus and Forlom. There's new sculpt Luke and Yoda, and then two mainline troopers with the Kamino clone trooper and a completely new stormtrooper. But in my attempt to fine tooth comb all the details for the new stormtrooper, I missed something. And when people pointed it out, I was like, how the hell did I miss that? Instead of the shoulder pads being mounted to the shoulder itself, where it either goes up inside the torso or it's glued lower where it flexes up and goes over the torso, it seems like this new stormtrooper has them mounted to the torso itself above the shoulders. This is a very, uh, Mayfexy thing to do. I'm not sure how much I like it in concept. It's one of those situations where we need to get it in hand and see what's going on there. But in a couple pictures, it shows it at least flexes with the arm up to 90. So 
mm, it looks like it'll be functional and it allows the arm to move underneath. And even though I know from several 501st members that the shoulder bell is actually mounted to the shoulder with a strap going under, this may work out better in terms of action figure engineering. Don't get me wrong, I'm still getting two or 10 and I may be a little bit sad if it does get in the way of some articulation, but not that sad. It's still a new Stormtrooper. I'll be slightly less giddy. How's that? Speaking of troopers, this week was May the 4th. It was Star Wars Day and GameStop was said to have a brand new reveal for the Black Series line. And they did. Technically, we toy collectors already knew about this in Ireland. Ireland had already put this up for pre-order, but it is the, here we go, Hasbro Star Wars Black Series GameStop exclusive gaming greats the Force Unleashed Shadow Stormtrooper. You know what the best thing about this pre-order is? I don't have to say that again for a while. But as far as GameStop is concerned, we knew nothing about this. Here's a reveal of a brand new figure that looks awesome. But overall, it's up for pre-order. What can I gripe about? I, I put it on pre-order, and while I'm half excited that I don't ever have to string those random words together again, the other half of me is more excited, which would make it more than half. I don't know where I'm going with this. Either way, it's a black stormtrooper with blue translucent parts. Oh, ba boom give it to me. Perfect world, this would be on the new trooper mold, but I know why it's not. I mean, they're still gonna milk that old mold for all it's worth. It doesn't bother me enough to cancel my pre-order or anything. <laughs> what are you, crazy? $25, ships in July. Speaking of reveals we already knew about, just today Hasbro officially revealed the fifth figure in their G.I. Joe Classified Series Wave 1, and are you ready? It's a doozy, it's a surprise, it's Snake Eyes. We already knew about this from eBay auctions and some stores already shipping their orders out, but it's still a cool reveal. I mean, were they gonna pass on putting a Snake Eyes in wave one? Seriously? I mean, it's Snake Eyes. This is a basic release of the deluxe Snake Eyes that was offered at Toy Fair. This time around though, it's all in black. Well, it's a mix of matte black and glossy black, which does so much for bringing the details out. Then there's little splashes of red and silver here and there. Same for the backpack, the knife, the sword, the sheath. Where we run into some changes here is they took away Snake Eyes' deluxe pistol and Uzi and gave us some spacey guns that kind of go along with the rest of the wave. Now I see a lot of comments of those aren't real guns, I'm out. And I kind of get it, but at the same time, I've ordered so many casts in the past few weeks I have weapons left over from older figures that I put in a bin, forgot completely about. I opened it up, I thought, oh, there's a, okay, here we go. So I understand it on principle, but at the same time, the guns aren't really attached to their hands. I mean, they're just in the package. Because what it comes down to, at least in my experience, the figures are so good that they won me over on the parts that I don't care for, like the excessive gold and even the armor. I'm okay with the armor. The gold, I keep harping on, uh, I'll drop it. But they are pure hand candy. In fact, I find myself asking for articulated toes simply to get them in more poses because that's the only way I can think that they will get more poses. And I don't usually ask for toes. I've strayed off, I've strayed off. <laughs> you can tell that I am in complete G.I. Joe mode right now. But anyway, $20, this is set to release June 1st. But Hasbro did manage to surprise us this week. Admittedly, there were rumors of a kingpin coming single carded later and well a deluxe release and there was speculation on what he would look like and the build a figure was quite dapper but it didn't feel classic-y it felt a little bit modern then for marvel monday this week hasbro revealed that it's going to be a more classic feeling kingpin in the purple pants the orange vest the blue ascot just looking badass. It's missing the pinstripes on the pants, but even that was inconsistent in the comics most of the time. The Ascot is actually a new overlay piece. I'm not sure if they, well, I haven't messed with the old one in a while. I don't know if the tie and shirt is an overlay piece on the Build-A-Figure. This may be just laying over that. It would be kind of cool to have that maybe removable, I don't know. Hey, daydreaming. And then this time around, the screaming head is bruised and bloody, which actually makes it a little bit more interesting. I don't usually care for screaming heads. Best of all, you can now take the old Build-A-Figure version, pop off the hands, pop off the head, put the Shadow King head on, some Monster Venom hands, and you have Shadow King. But I can also see how this will piss off the people who bought two of those waves to get two Kingpins in order to make Shadow King back then. Can't blame you. But maybe the retro card will change your mind <laughs> if you're doing card collection or the nostalgia gets to you. 
mm, it does look pretty on that card. $30 ships in November. And that's it for this week. Like I said, some stuff we had already seen, some stuff we already knew, but a little information, a little bit of new parts, a little bit of reveal. It's 112 scale action figures. I'm always gonna be right here talking about them. If you wanna see close-ups of any of these pictures or information or links to pre-orders, all of that will be on the Foosh front page at noon on Saturday. I'm still sitting here watching the Kickstarter. 50 minutes to go, $3,376,000. And it's still cranking. 377,000. 23,000 backers. That is insane. 3,378,000. It's crazy. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel. Patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. My God, G.I. Joe is killing me. I mean, <laughs> does Roadblock need new weapons? Sure, let's try them all.